Hey, Ron here from Military Images with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. I spent the weekend in Gettysburg and am back home at the home office, but Gettysburg is still on my mind. As I was driving home, I thought about all the soldiers that I've researched in the past who were involved in the Gettysburg campaign. And one of the most memorable is the young man pictured here. He's a real rabble rouser in the 5th Alabama Infantry. His name is David Barnum, or Davy to his friends. I spent a lot of time researching him, and I'm not sure if trouble followed him or he followed trouble. Anyway, the two seem to go hand in hand. So I want to start tonight talking about his story. I'll take you back to May of 1862. He had been in the regiment for less than a year, and he had been in a something of a, a feud with a knife, drew a knife on the bandmaster, a man named von Bodenhausen. That didn't go well. The two men went into the battle nursing a feud, and just before the fighting began, von Bodenhausen patted Davy Barnum on the shoulder and said reportedly, be quiet, keep cool. Otherwise, I draws my knife on you. Payback. Not only did Davy Barnum have to worry about the Federals in front of him, but he had to worry about the bandmaster behind him. That's just, that's just the beginning. Von Badenhausen, in the battle that followed, he emerged uninjured. Barnum was not so lucky. As he was laying on the ground with his fellow Alabamians waiting for the action to begin, a mini bullet struck him in the left shoulder and tore diagonally across his back. And the bullet exited his body just before it reached the spine, but then it embedded itself in his right hip. So the bullet literally skipped across his back, embedding itself in the right hip. Surgeons were not able to locate that bullet, and there wasn't much it could do other than apply a simple dressing to his hip. The injury healed. The bullet remained inside. Barnum returns back to duty. Not too long after, a few months later, he and his fellow Alabamians go into the Maryland campaign with Robert E. Lee and the Army of Northern Virginia. They're invading the North. One day after a long, long march, everyone's exhausted and they set up camp for the night and they bed down just to grab a little shut eye before the next march. During the brief respite, Barnum is tossing and turning, he's unable to sleep. He's eventually complaining aloud that a rock was making him uncomfortable. A few of his comrades come over to help find the pesky rock. According to one quote, we examined him carefully, but could find nothing. This is one of the officers who said that. We then looked in his pockets, and at last we discovered it was the mini ball that had worked its way under the skin and eventually popped out. So the bullet did come out. But less than two weeks later, on September 14th, the opposing armies were battling near Antietam Creek. After a day of heavy fighting, the Confederates were in a pretty precarious situation. General Lee ordered his forces to pull back and sent in fresh troops to cover the withdrawal. Included in the number were two companies from the 5th Alabama. That detachment included Barnum. They tramped over to nearby Turner's Gap. And at some point during the night, Barnum and about a dozen of his comrades fell into enemy hands and were transported to Baltimore's Fort McHenry. Funny thing about it is here you've got Barnum being wounded at Seven Pines, captured during the Antietam campaign. And the fact of the matter is he, he never wanted to be a soldier. He wanted to be a Navy man, and he dreamed of traveling the world by ship across the high seas. While he was locked up in Fort McHenry, just a stone's throw, from the waters of the harbor of Baltimore and the Atlantic Ocean, it may have seemed to him that he was never further from realizing his dream. So it's not the first time that he was in an odd situation like this. 
1853, when he was about nine, he was caught up in a yellow fever epidemic that swept through Selma, Alabama, where he was living with his family. Actually, he'd recently moved there from nearby Greene County. His father was a physician and one of the health officers in Selma. Fell, he fell victim to the disease. Father died. Barnum, a younger brother, and his mother were spared from the sickness. She eventually moved the kids to Minnesota, and they all settled in St. Paul. A few years later, when, he, when young Davy was 14, he accepted an appointment to the U.S. Naval Academy, and he left St. Paul for Annapolis. But he was not well prepared for a structured environment. During his first two years, he ranked near the bottom of his class and racked up hundreds of demerits. He was on the verge of expulsion. And just when it couldn't get any worse, he's deciding that he can't take it anymore. He resigns from the academy. Now, word of his resignation reaches the Secretary of the Navy, a man named Isaac Tausey. Tausey was a Connecticut Yankee appointed by James Buchanan. He was sympathetic with Barnum's plight and reinstated him with the caveat that he diligently pursue his studies. Well, Barnum failed to heed Tausey's warning. He took a second chance, but he just couldn't make it. School officials held him back a year and threatened him with expulsion. Then the war came. With the outbreak of hostilities in the spring of 1861, sort of got him out of the academic oblivion that he was sliding into. Barnum left Annapolis in the summer of 1861 to fight for his home in the South. But his mother, who's now remarried and younger brother, they were still up in Minnesota. Barnum made his way through northern Virginia to the town of Union Mills, where he found the camp of the Greensboro Guards that Greene County, Alabama, place where he had called home for a while. He joins a militia company. In fact, his father had once commanded this militia company before he died of disease. Since his father had been with the company, it had become part of the 5th Alabama. So this is how young Davy gets to join the 5th Alabama. He enlists as a private, and immediately the troubles begin. Drinking, brawling, fighting with von Baudenhausen, the bandmaster. Just the list goes on and on, just like he racked up demerits in the Naval Academy. Still, he had his finer moments. He got out of prison out of Fort McHenry and was back in time for the Battle of Gettysburg. There's a little anecdote of Barnum and his fellow Alabama soldiers participating in the rout of the Federals on the first day. The next day, July 2nd, Barnum reportedly shows up in camp with a haversack full of candy, lemons, and other niceties that he quote-unquote gathered from town. And of course, he distributed the treats to his grateful comrades. Just a month after the battle, he left the regiment because he had put in a transfer to join the Confederate Navy, and it was approved. His application was improved. So all of a sudden, life was looking up for little Davy. His dreams of sailing the seas looked like they were going to become true. And in fact, he reports to Charleston to the Naval Station and enters with the rank of master. Unfortunately, his stint in the Navy lasted just about a year. In the spring of 1864, Lieutenant General Ulysses S. Grant launches the Overland Campaign against Lee and the Army of Northern Virginia. The bloody fighting and the casualties decimated both armies. Confederate authorities reacted. They were desperate to have troops to fill in the gaps left by the fighting during those early months in May and June of 64. They're looking for recruits. They have something of a conscription act. And Barnum is drafted out of the Navy back into the ranks of the Army. And he rejoins his comrades in the 5th Alabama back to where he started. The regiment was among the remaining units that were left in the Army of Northern Virginia 
when they surrendered at Appomattox Courthouse on April 9th, 1865. Barnum, however, although he rejoined the 5th during the Overland campaign, he wasn't there at Appomattox. At some point, I've never been able to find when he actually left, but he wasn't there. At some point, he deserted with thousands of other Confederates during those probably those final chaotic days leading up to the surrender. Now, I did pick up his trail about two months later, July of 1865. He turns up in Tennessee, excuse me, in June of 1865, he turns up in Tennessee and he signs the oath of allegiance to the federal government. At that point, I lose him again. But according to his captain, Barnum made his way to St. Louis where he died. I don't know what the cause of death was, but I can tell you that his dream of traveling the world by sea was never fulfilled. But during his time in Confederate uniform and his time in the Union, the U.S. Naval Academy, he did make something of, his, of a name for himself as a rabble rouser. So there you have the story of David Davy Barnum. We'll see you next time on 